another excellent question. Um, first, let me start with what economics deal with today. I mean, what you are describing is is to a significant extent one branch of economics that admittedly today dominates. I mean, it's macro and macro and micro. Um, but um, the classical economists put much more emphasis on the market process and institutions. And so to speak, if you look at what does economics do, the canon of economics, uh, I think I, I would add these these keywords to that as really essential contributions for our understanding of uh, you know why how economies work, politics works, and or not how or doesn't work. Um, so so that's kind of like on the first point. I I would emphasize that economics is not just you know about the efficient allocation of means to an end it's also about you know analyzing the processes the market processes the economic the, the market processes with the where the economic exchange of goods and services takes place and the political market processes where incentives also operate which brings me to the second real question of yours you know what is what, what about the issues that also matter and um, I would say that um, climate change, environment, is 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 in a way another public good externality uh, element uh, that has always been on the, or maybe not always, but for a long time been on the radar of economists. But that has, of course, gained much more prominence with the debate about climate change and uh, the by now global shortages in 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 a healthy environment that have emerged so um so environmental economics is a, is, is a long standing part, branch of economics um i've studied it already when i was a student that was many many years ago um but uh, it's become more prominent and it does and economics to my mind actually does provide an excellent toolkit to analyze this i mean you know i think it, without economics it would be it, it it you know without a proper application of economic thinking we will face great difficulties in mastering our environmental and climate challenges and i think uh, you know, i've been thinking about it for a while also because in the oecd i was uh, st strongly involved in this area especially through the question of carbon pricing i was responsible for the tax side there and uh, also for trade because carbon pricing is the way where you say to say, I mean, you have a scarce good, uh, which is difficult to, to where, where you want to reduce consumption, but it is difficult to achieve that because, you know, so far we have treated it like a free good. And um, carbon pricing is in a way to, to internalize the externalities on climate change and on, you know, other negative side effects that, that uh, um, pollution and carbon uh, CO2 has. So um, I think, and that is now becoming in, in more and more countries the, the accepted way um, that uh, we, we can master the, uh, the, the climate change challenge. Uh, of course, there are economists also provide other instruments uh, in this area, you know, regulation and subsidies and so on, uh, which, you know, uh, and like discussing trade-offs, you know, carbon pricing is kind of a good compass. But, you know, is it really good to let prices fluctuate all the way to the top or to the bottom because of some temporary factors that might actually have an inbuilt destructive effect on the market? Um, so, you know, economists provide a lot of tools there um, for the debate. And they also can help you explain why, for instance, certain measures are less efficient, you know, that you get less bang for the buck, you get less carbon prevention for the euro or the dollar than, say, through carbon pricing. You know, in Germany, we are very good at this by spending lots of money on uh, insulating buildings and subsidizing uh, in renewable energy without having uh, checked, you know, whether this is the best way to, to, to spend the money in terms of, uh, you know, getting uh, climate change mitigation. So economics, I, I, I dwell a bit on this example because 
by extrapolation, you know, some of the other challenges you mentioned are different. But in any case, for all these challenges, we can we can uh, we provide a toolkit. You know, it's admittedly uh, um, you know it's admittedly an imperfect toolkit, and to 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 kind of tease out messages, we have to simplify. So one always has to be careful. But uh, it's a good toolkit. And then you know, as regards the other issues you mentioned, I mean, going beyond GDP, for instance, and going to well-being. Clearly, I mean, um, you know, if say a clean environment is part of the well-being index, then um, you know that economics can help kind of get a good uh, combination of you know prosperity and a clean environment. Um, then we get into difficult issues. You know, even GDP is a, something that's difficult to measure. Something scientific like, you know, the pollution, that's, we can measure, but we don't clearly understand the path of these things and how, you know, how much, you know, CO2 emissions are really possible and all we have, we have, a, lot, we have a lot of uncertainty, not so much about the measurement, but about the, um, the, the impact uh, of, of the pollution. There are other areas, you know, where we have a lot of, a lot more problems with measurement. Happiness, for instance, you know, ultimately we want to be happy. And can economics say something about happiness? A lot, yes, there is a happiness literature. But one has to be a bit more careful that one doesn't kind of move into a brave new world type setting where you say, okay, I mean, if, the, uh, if happiness means you don't, are not depressed and are not worried, well, then let's all take Soma or, you know, some of these other drugs. And then for very little money, we're all very happy. So um, it's, um, it gets more complicated when the measurement of the goals is difficult, when then also you may have different theories on how to uh, achieve it. And, you know, you, you don't know which of the theories is really the, the one uh, um, uh, describing, so to speak, well, the problem, you know, like the, the pills theory versus the more integrated better life theory and so on. So, and then, uh, um, and then you have to look at the political incentives in the other areas, you know, what kind of incentives do then policymakers have in going back to environment, um, you know, and policymakers are elected by voters and many of them may be craftsmen or, uh, you know, other people who say, I mean, if there's a lot of uh, money in this, you know, let's get some of it for us. And uh, so then you get building insulation programs and subsidies and stuff like that, or you, you get the uh, lobby of the uh, solar panel owners on roofs. So if you find it's uh, maybe not the most efficient way to uh, reduce carbon emissions, you will still find that a lot of people will hate you if you then want to reduce their subsidies. So um, uh, it's... Um, for the, so to speak, the less monetary and and measurable something becomes, the more difficult, to my mind, it becomes to really draw, draw clear lessons from an economic perspective. But in terms of behavioral patterns and and the role of constraints and the importance of efficiency, I think that that can be applied uh, to to many more areas. And I haven't now commented on any of the other ones you mentioned. If you want me to comment on any particular issue, I'm happy to do that. But, um, but I think as a principle, uh, it, it is a very good development that we are becoming um, much more sophisticated also in terms of what we actually want to achieve, achieve uh, as economists, you know, thanks to the feedback also from our populations who are not just happy anymore with getting say more cars or more money or whatever.